What's up AHS fans, we're back for yet another American Horror Story Spotlight. This time around, we're showcasing the talented Thaisa Farmiga, one of the AHS OGs having starred in Murder House, Coven, and Roanoke. Oh, and don't forget, she also popped back up in Apocalypse, of course. So let's use some Tempest Infinitum and start with Murder House. Back in 2010, at just 16 years old, Thaisa landed one of the leading roles in the first season of American Horror Story. She played Violet Harmon, daughter to Ben and Vivian, the fateful family that moved cross-country into the murder house. They probably should have googled the place first. The Harmon family had its fair share of problems. Ben was caught having an affair with a student of his, and in an effort to save his marriage and start over with a clean slate, the family relocated from the Boston area. Violet herself was troubled with everything going on and suffers from depression. At first, she's not too keen on the new digs, but soon she finds herself attracted to the murder house's dark past. After settling into their new home, Violet takes a razor to her wrists and is interrupted by Tate Langdon. She's unaware that Tate is a ghost that's trapped within the walls of the murder house. The two quickly become close friends after finding out the family issues they both share. Tate even takes her out on a date, on Halloween, the one day of the year when the murder house ghosts can actually leave the house. While enjoying their bonfire on the beach, the pair is approached by some bloodied and disfigured teenagers. What looked like some teens in some awesome costumes were actually a handful of Tate's high school victims that were haunting him. Violet quickly does her research, talks to her neighbor and Tate's mom Constance, and uncovers the horrifying truth of Tate's past. He was responsible for a mass shooting at Westfield High School and was killed inside the murder house. Not only is Tate a ghost, but he was also a mass murderer. Violet isn't aware, and neither is the audience, that she soon overdoses on sleeping pills after finding out about Tate. He tried to save her life, but was too late, and hid her body underneath the house. Eventually, he would come clean to Violet about everything, and it's devastating. She took so many, Violet. <laughs> it gets even darker. Violet would soon find out even more horrible stuff about Tate. See, Tate killed previous owners Chad and Patrick, and he also raped Vivian Harmon in the Rubberman suit. Despite her feelings for Tate, Violet could no longer justify any relationship with him. Uh, no sh**. By the end of the season, Vivian also passes away inside the house during childbirth with the eventual Antichrist Michael Langdon. Don't worry, Ben Harmon would soon follow. The entire Harmon family, with new baby Jeffrey, are now ghosts inside the murder house. But that doesn't stop them from celebrating Christmas. Unfortunately for Tate, he's in the literal doghouse, as is Hayden. Violet banishes him for good, but he vows to wait however long Violet needs to forgive him. She'll never talk to you again. I'll wait. Forever if I have to. In Apocalypse's return to Murder House, we caught back up with Violet and the ongoing fling with Tate. We found out that Violet continued to ignore Tate since the last time we saw them. Good on you, Violet. Tate never gives up, though. He makes endless attempts to talk to her and make amends. He attends regular therapy sessions with Ben Harmon. Violet still doesn't care, and for good reason. But then Madison Montgomery has to ruin everything. She's literally on her way out the door and decides to put a spell on Violet and basically reveal to her that Tate did one good thing recently. He saved her mom from Michael Langdon. Yay, that makes everything better. Violet reunites with Tate and decides to forgive him for everything. Seriously. But thank God for Mallory! When she traveled back in time at the end of the season to kill Michael Langdon with her fancy SUV, she reset the entire AHS timeline. That means that Violet and Tate never got back together, and Tate's still on the outs with Violet, exactly where he deserves to be for eternity. After sitting out the second season of Asylum, Thaisa would return in a leading role as Zoe Benson, one of the coven's new faces at Miss Robichaud's Academy. It all starts the day Zoe and her boyfriend Charlie take things to the next level and have sex for the first time. Unfortunately, things go terribly wrong as Zoe accidentally gives him a fatal aneurysm. You see, it turns out Zoe's from a bloodline of witches, and her great-grandmother had the very same curse growing up. This would lead Myrtle Snow to Zoe's doorstep, and her family would whisk her away Citizen Kane-style to New Orleans to attend Miss Robichaud's Academy for exceptional young ladies. The second she enters the Academy door, she's greeted with some magical hazing from fellow students Nan, Queenie, and Madison Montgomery. Jesus, Sabrina, relax. We're just messing with you. After meeting Cordelia, Zoe goes to a college party with Madison, and here she would meet Kyle Spencer. 
Meanwhile, Madison would be drugged and nearly gang raped by a group of frat boys before Kyle intervenes and the guys flee. But they didn't get too far because Madison recovered enough to use her telekinetic powers to flip the escape vehicle with the boys inside. Zoe visited the hospital in hopes that Kyle may have survived the incident. Unfortunately, the ringleader of Madison's rape was the only survivor, but not for long as she would have sex with him and I think you know how this ends. Now, Zoe would end up snitching to the cops, but the Supreme Fiona Good would step in and fix this with a little magic. Later on, Zoe and Madison would break into a morgue to revive Kyle with a resurrection spell and a kiss from Zoe. Kyle would end up in a Frankenstein monster-like state and pummel a night watchman. And this would lead to Misty Day agreeing to look after Kyle in Zoe's place, who has to return to the academy. One thing would lead to another and Zoe would soon discover that zombie Kyle killed his abusive mother, and this would lead them to part ways for a moment. Now back at the academy, Zoe is grilled by the witch's council about Madison's disappearance. She was killed by Fiona. And only hours later, the house was attacked by voodoo queen Marie Laveau's zombies. In the absence of Cordelia and Fiona, Zoe took charge, acting as the leader of the group and successfully stopping the zombies with a chainsaw and magic. After the death of Myrtle, Zoe tries to find out what happened to Madison, only to accidentally summon the Axemen in hopes to find Madison. Sure enough, the Axemen does indeed help her out, and she finds Madison's body in Spalding's room. And Zoe would head back to Misty to try to revive Madison, but Zombie Kyle is having a full-blown meltdown. Zoe would bring the two back to the Coven's greenhouse and convince Misty to bring Madison back to life. That very same night, the Axeman goes after Cordelia, and to save her, Zoe uses her power and releases the Axeman. Afterwards, Cordelia starts to think that Zoe could be the next Supreme after the way she handled him. Now, they would need to keep this a secret, or Fiona might take out Zoe next. And later on, when Zoe returns to check on good old Kyle and Madison, they're in the middle of having sex. Sorry, Zoe. Next, Zoe will restore Spalding's tongue to get some answers about Fiona, and when she gets them, she stabs him in the chest, killing him. Back to Madison and Kyle for a sec. Instead of fighting over Frank and Kyle's undead heart, Mads convinces Zoe to share him and participate in a threesome. Of course, this thruple wouldn't last as Kyle would reveal that he's in love with Zoe and he would push Madison's advances away. This pisses off Madison and she would vow to undo Kyle and become the next Supreme. With a growing list of enemies, specifically Madison and Fiona, Myrtle tries to talk Zoe into hiding out for a while. So Zoe heads to Orlando with Kyle. Unfortunately, things don't go so smoothly as Kyle would kill a homeless man, <laughs> who Zoe would immediately revive with her power of Vitalum Vitalis. Thinking that she's the next Supreme, Zoe and Kyle would return to the Academy just in time to kill the Axemen, mirroring his murder in 1919. Turns out Zoe's not the next Supreme. During the Trial of the Seven Wonders, Zoe accidentally transmutes outside of the house and is impaled by an iron gate, killing her. Cordelia and Myrtle would ask Madison to resurrect Zoe, but she refuses. So an angry Kyle would kill Madison for refusing to bring Zoe back to life, but then Cordelia resurrects Zoe, proving that Cordelia has been the rising Supreme this whole time. At the end of the season, Zoe would stay with Kyle and the Coven under the new reign of Cordelia's supremacy as part of the Council, and Kyle would replace Balding as the new house butler. Thaisa would return in 2018 as Zoe once again in the crossover season Apocalypse, where three years before the bombs dropped, we witnessed her as an instructor and mentor witch at Miss Robichaud's Academy. Here, Zoe would witness the powers of the future Supreme Mallory firsthand. In fact, Zoe was the one who informed Cordelia that Mallory may be very special after witnessing her manually resurrect Coco. It just helped her. I've never seen anything like it. Zoe would witness the power of Michael Langdon firsthand with the resurrection of her fallen fellow witches, Queenie and Madison. Later on, after the witches burn Miss Mead at the stake, the Antichrist would get his revenge by breaking into the Academy with Mead's robotic clone and shooting her in the head, killing her. Of course, Zoe's death is reversed by Mallory via bathtub time machine in which she kills Michael, preventing her and many other deaths. Years later, Thaisa returned to AHS for a much smaller role in Season 6. In fact, she appears in just one episode, Chapter 9 of Roanoke. Here she played Sophie Green, an obsessed blogger, vlogger, or YouTuber who was a huge fan of My Roanoke Nightmare. Her and her friends were diehard fans and created the online community Army of Roanoke. Sophie and her two friends, Todd and Milo, went on a clout-chasing mission to gain more popularity online. You guessed it, they actually showed up at the Roanoke house with cameras to document their experience. Not too smart, guys. Not too smart. 
So they started to explore the property and came across a mysterious woman that's completely disoriented and hurt. She runs from them in fear and the trio stumble across a car accident. Turns out the victim of the car crash is Diana Cross, who was Sydney's assistant. And that woman they saw in the woods was Diana's ghost. Sydney, of course, was the executive producer of My Roanoke Nightmare, but was killed himself in the sequel, Return to Roanoke. Sophie, Todd, and Milo do what any normal people would do. They go to the cops. But you and I know that cops in the American Horror Story universe are no good. They think that the kids are pranking them and order them to stay away from the property. I mean, this is exactly how every horror movie works. God, the cops don't believe it until it's too late. That's when the trio makes another horrible decision. They went back to the house. Seriously. Even worse, it's nighttime. This is exactly when I would dip out and go home. But they stick to their plans and eventually find Lee, who had been possessed by Skathich. Skatha? Skaha? However you say it. Lee immediately kills poor Todd. <laughs> Luckily, Sophie and Milo escape and stumble upon a production trailer from Return to Roanoke. They quickly find out, though, that nearly everyone on the crew was killed. Sophie wanted to put up a fight against Lee. Again, another horrible idea. Unfortunately, the pair can't hide for too long. You can't run from the Roanoke colony. They finish them off with their patented fatality, impaled by stake and burned alive. The evidence of their deaths was uploaded to the cloud and their bodies found by those horrible police officers the next day. That's it for us guys. What's your favorite Thaisa Farmiga performance? And who should we spotlight next? Let us know in the comments below and thanks for watching.